Evil Dead 2, otherwise known as Evil Dead 2 Dead by Dawn, Sam Raimi's 1987 hit sequel in which the legendary Bruce Campbell returns as Ash to take on the evil and demonic Deadites. It all starts when Ash and his girlfriend Linda decide to have a romantic getaway in a cabin in the woods, where Ash plays a recording which recites passages from the Necronomicon, aka the Book of the Dead, in which evil forces arrive, where Linda gets possessed and Ash can't escape. And what transpires next is memorable scene after memorable scene of sheer pandemonium in this insane and quirky and violent as hell horror comedy, which takes the concept of the first movie and turns it up to 11, in one of those rare cases where a sequel might actually be better than its original. In fact, I see Evil Dead 2 as being the road warrior of Evil Dead, in that it's self-contained and you don't really need to see its predecessor, and it expands on the world seen in the first movie, and is arguably better. Swallow this. So it's time to open up the Necronomicon one more time as we explore 10 things that you didn't know about Evil Dead 2. So let's get the chainsaws ready and check it out. Ooh. Number 10, Evil Dead 2 was originally abandoned. It was during the making of the first Evil Dead movie in 1981 that its young writer and director Sam Raimi was approached by the movie's publicist about coming up with a sequel. Raimi teamed up with Bloodsport and Rambo 3 scriptwriter Sheldon Lettage, where they came up with the concept of a sequel, Evil Dead 2 and the Army of Darkness which was to follow up where the first movie finishes, where Ash gets pulled into a time portal and goes back to the Middle Ages, where he must continue his battle with the Deadites. The concept of Evil Dead 2 and the Army of Darkness was advertised in trade magazines in order to get potential investors, but the advertisements didn't go anywhere, and both 20th Century Fox and Universal Pictures were pitched the Evil Dead sequel, but they didn't want to have anything to do with it. And so Evil Dead 2 was abandoned, and instead Raimi teamed up with the Coen brothers to direct the horror comedy Crime Wave. And as we all know, this Army of Darkness idea for Part 2, which sees Ash travelling back to the Middle Ages, was then reused for the third entry, The Army of Darkness, in 1992. Number 9, Evil Dead 2 went back into production, and then it wasn't. Okay, so after the critical and financial failure of Crime Wave, Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell and their production company, Renaissance Pictures, knew that in order to save their careers, their next movie needed to be a big hit, so it was decided to go back to Evil Dead, and to finally get the sequel off the ground. Embassy Pictures, whom had just previously distributed The Fog and The Howling, as well as Raimi's previous movie, Crime Wave, then got on board to finance Evil Dead 2. However, the production had completely stalled, as Evil Dead 2 was stuck in pre-production development, with five months passing and nothing really happening, and Embassy Pictures would become defunct in 1986. So it would seem that once again the production was shelved, except for one man who came along and saved the day. Number 8. Evil Dead 2 got made thanks to Stephen King. So after things didn't work out with Embassy Pictures, producer Dino De Laurentiis, who by the way just a few years earlier produced the insanely awesome Flash Gordon as well as the Conan movies, had approached Sam Raimi about the possibility of him directing a movie version of Stephen King's story, Thinner. At the time, De Laurentiis had a movie deal with Stephen King, where he would produce several movies based on the author's work, including Silver Bullet, Cat's Eye, and Maximum Overdrive, which King himself had directed. However, Raimi turned Finner down, choosing to focus on getting, or at least trying to get, his Evil Dead sequel off the ground. When word got back to Stephen King that Raimi was having difficulties getting funding for Evil Dead 2, he got straight on the phone to De Laurentiis and asked him personally to fund the movie, on the account that Stephen King was a massive fan of the first Evil Dead movie, of which he famously gave a glowing review of. 
So thanks to King's recommendation, De Laurentiis met up with Raimi and his team at Renaissance, where despite originally having reservations, after a 20 minute meeting, De Laurentiis agreed to produce Evil Dead 2 and gave the movie a budget of $3.6 million. Look, it makes sense when you think about it. If Stephen King, you know, the master of horror, tells you to make a horror movie, then you damn well make that horror movie. End of. Number seven, remake or sequel. Raimi teamed up with his friend Scott Spiegel to help him write the script for Evil Dead 2. The two had previously worked on several of Raimi's earlier movies, including Within the Woods, which was a precursor to The Evil Dead. Now, Dino De Laurentiis expressed that due to the movie's tight budget, he didn't want the Middle Ages and time-travelling plot, but rather for the sequel to more resemble the first Evil Dead movie. The medieval aspect did feature at the end of the film, though. But in addition to that, the two writers decided to make Evil Dead 2 feel more light-hearted and to use more slapstick comedy, which is a welcomed balance in contrast to some of the movie's more horrific visuals. There was also a subplot in the original script that wasn't in the film, where some escaped convicts hold Ash hostage in the cabin as they search for lost treasure. Yeah, it's probably for the best that this subplot was left out. One of the most interesting aspects of Evil Dead 2's storytelling is the recap of events at the start of the movie which basically shows what happened in the first movie, only drastic changes were made, which has led many fans to claim that the start of Evil Dead 2 is actually more of a remake of the first movie. Some of these changes include removing characters, so it's just Ash and his girlfriend who enter the cabin in the woods. And in the first movie, the Necronomicon is destroyed in a fireplace, which doesn't happen in the recap scene. I can remember reading in one online article that Evil Dead 2 isn't a remake and that both Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell have always maintained that it's a continuation of the first movie and that the start of the movie was going to feature clips from the first Evil Dead but they couldn't get the rights to use those clips so they just filmed new clips and made some tweaks and adjustments in the recap in order to help the movie flow into Evil Dead 2's story. So do I think the start of Evil Dead is a remake of the first movie? Well, not necessarily. I see it as a refilmed recap, which also makes several creative changes in order to transition the events of Evil Dead 2 better. For example, having the other characters from part 1 might slow the recap down rather than just getting to the point already. But I do understand when people say they feel like it's a remake. Number 6. Freddy Krueger's Glove Makes a Cameo The filming of Evil Dead 2 took place at Wadesboro in North Carolina, with most of the filming taking place in the woods, with interior sets being built at a local school gymnasium. The crew found a barn house which not only was used for filming, but also became the official office of Evil Dead 2. And from accounts that I've read, the mood on the set was generally fun, with lots of jokes and gags taking place. One gag led to a famous cameo, that being Freddy Krueger's famous knife glove, which can be seen in two different scenes. It was intended to be a cheeky in-joke by the filmmakers. The big question is though, just how on earth did Freddy's glove make it onto the Evil Dead 2 set in the first place? Well, this is thanks to makeup effects artist Mark Shostrom, who was not only working on Evil Dead 2 at the time, but also in Nightmare on Elm Street 3 The Dream Warriors. While working on Nightmare 3, Shostrom borrowed the Freddy glove and took it to the Evil Dead 2 set, where it was snuck into the background. Yeah, Wikipedia said he borrowed the glove, but I wonder, did he borrow the glove or borrow the glove? <laughs> Either way, it was a great cameo, and obviously the glove returned safe and sound, so all good. Number 5. Workshed there's a scene in Evil Dead 2 where Ash is battling a possessed Linda, where the line Workshed was inexplicably dubbed in the scene. Uh, workshed. The audio sounds a bit weird and really out of place, and you can just tell that it's obviously a dubbed line. Workshed. When listening to it, you can really tell that the line was added in post. But yeah, you know, it just sounds kind of off. Uh, workshed. Yeah, I know the character does end up going to the workshed, but it's still a jarring line and it's just put in there. Workshed. In fact, this bizarre off-the-cuff dubbed line had become kind of infamous. 
So much so that nine years later, when Bruce Campbell showed up on the set of Escape from LA to film his cameo, when actor Kurt Russell saw Campbell on set, the first thing he did was approach him and ask him to say, work shed. Work shed. So it kind of makes you wonder if this is a common thing with Campbell, and if he has frequently had fans approaching him asking him to say work shed. Work shed. I mean, it's kind of perfect when you think about it. It's short and sweet and simple. And what more do you possibly need to know in life other than work shed? Work shed. Number four, the case of the missing demon head. So the climax of Evil Dead 2 is actually pretty epic and spectacular, where we see Ash battle a giant demonic head, which I swear looks like Freddy. At first, I wondered if they also borrowed the snakehead Freddy Krueger from Dream Warriors as well as the glove. Well, no. The demon head in Evil Dead 2 was its own thing, and even got the on-set nickname of Rotten Applehead. Okay, I don't know why, as it doesn't really look like an apple, but sure, why not, I'll go with it. Rotten Applehead it is. However, once filming had wrapped up, the giant demonic head was just too big and too heavy to transport back to California. So the crew just left the ghoulish prop at North Carolina. This started a big mystery of this head's whereabouts, as for a long time, eager fans were trying to find out what became of this prop as well as where it is. The mystery though was solved when it was discovered at a haunted house attraction in North Carolina where no doubt over the years it had been terrifying many patrons who visited the attraction. I mean, just imagine that you're a kid and you go to a haunted house attraction, expecting all the usual shtick, like having employees and costumes and bats flying around on fishing lines, only to have that big head beast jump out at you. Yeah, that'll be freaking awesome. Number three, alternative title. Well, it seems that Germany really doesn't like the title of Evil Dead, as when Evil Dead 2 was released in Germany, it had its title changed to Dance of the Devils 2. And this change wasn't just exclusive to Evil Dead 2, as when the first Evil Dead movie was released in Germany, that too was also retitled to Dance of the Devils. Which is odd, as there's actually no dancing in that movie. At least it makes more sense with Evil Dead 2 when we see Linda's undead dance. Oh, and this doesn't seem to be something that's changed over the years either, as the franchise is still referred to as Dance of the Devils. As you can see by this recent Blu-ray release, it's still called Dance of the Devils. Who knows, maybe the title has become so iconic in Germany, it'll be weird now to change it to Evil Dead. Similar to how Airplane is still called Flying High in Australia, with that title being iconic here. Something else I find quite fascinating is how in Germany they made minor tweaks to the poster art too, and turned the skull blue. I don't know why it was felt necessary to do that, but it does kind of give it a neon punk look. And to be fair, it does actually make the human eyes stand out more and appear creepier, so yeah, I'm down with it. Number two, a fake company had to be made to distribute Evil Dead 2. While making Evil Dead 2, it was intended for the movie to be given an R rating. However, due to the movie's high levels of gore and violence, the De Laurentiis Entertainment Group felt that the movie was actually more suiting to an X rating, which would have really hurt the movie financially upon its release. Cutting certain scenes out to give the movie an R rating was out of the question, as it was felt if the movie was cut down for an R rating, then Evil Dead 2 would barely be just over an hour long. So the De Laurentiis Entertainment Group did something that I think is actually quite clever. They decided to not submit Evil Dead 2 to the MPAA and to release the movie without a rating. And so the company couldn't be directly linked to this violent as hell movie that skipped the MPAA, they created a shell company called Rosebud Releasing Corporation. That's why Evil Dead 2 starts off with that Rosebud logo. That has probably made you wonder why you haven't seen other movies released by this supposed Rosebud company. Fun fact, it was Sam Raimi himself who filmed this Rosebud releasing logo. So in a nutshell, Rosebud Releasing was pretty much a bogus film company that was created so Evil Dead 2 could be released without a rating and thus be successful in the box office. Everyone got that? But despite all this, Rosebud Releasing was a smokescreen and Evil Dead 2 really was a De Laurentiis Entertainment Group picture. Number one, Evil Dead 2 was a slow burner, but it got there. 
Evil Dead 2 was released in March 1987, and its first weekend was pretty abysmal, with it only making $807,000. Which, yeah, disappointing. Definitely nothing to write home about. It's believed that what hurt Evil Dead 2's release was releasing it in just 310 theatres. However, after being released in theatres for a couple of weeks, the box office numbers did start to improve, probably due to word of mouth where Evil Dead 2 would go on to make nearly $11 million on its $3.5 million budget, making the movie quite profitable. The critics really liked Evil Dead 2. They loved it for its gore, effects, and general creativeness being praised, with Empire calling Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell gods. Wow, I guess they really liked the movie. Even Roger Ebert really enjoyed it, calling Evil Dead 2 a sophisticated satire. Entertainment Weekly ranked the movie 19 in a list of top 50 cult movies, and Playboy would rank it 12 in a list of sequels that are better than their originals. Wow, all these rankings. What a bunch of rankers. And of course, it goes without saying that Evil Dead 2 has become a cult movie. Probably one of the most recognisable cult movies of all time. Bottom line is, I freaking love this movie. I think Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell took what they had done with the first Evil Dead movie and perfected it, creating one of the greatest horror movies of the 80s. I also think that the movie benefits from its slapstick humour, without taking itself too seriously like the first movie often could, and that it really highlights Campbell's comedic timing and general on-screen charisma. I also really enjoy the stop-motion effects. I think they look fantastic, giving the movie's tiny budget. And I know that I keep saying this, but despite some of the effects looking a little bit creaky, it's still better than modern CGI. And let's be honest, CGI ages as well as milk. So if you ever find a cabin in the woods, whatever you do, don't read the Necronomicon, or you'll summon up a heap of ghoulish delights in a gory adventure full of laughs and shocks, just like Ash did in 1987, whom gave us one bizarre and truly memorable movie. Not to mention, I thought the concept of Evil Ash was also pretty cool, hence this mask. Go over there, Evil Ash. Don't eat me. So the big question is, should you watch Evil Dead 2? Well, if you want to see one of the best horror movies of all time, then yeah, you should watch it. It is quite violent and gruesome, but I always felt like Evil Dead 2 feels more like a comic book than it did actually horrific. Anyway, I'm Minty and Groovy. See ya. Workshed. Shed.